Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Bellator fight prediction video. In this video, I'll be predicting some of the key fights for Bellator 273, Bader versus Moldovsky. So without further ado, let's get to the first fight on the card that I'll be predicting. So in the first fight that I'll be predicting, I'll be predicting the lightweight bout between Syed Awad versus Chris Gonzalez. And high this one right here is, um, Syed Awad has some power for sure. Definitely the better striker. Chris Gonzalez looks very uncomfortable on his feet. But I feel like we have seen time and time again, you know how Syed Awad can lose at times. Or I definitely can see some deficiencies in his wrestling defense. And he's just like susceptible to being controlled on the ground. And I feel like Chris Gonzalez does have that background and can cause him issues there. I feel like Gonzalez had just enough of striking to set up his takedowns and, you know, be able to grind a, you know, a lackluster decision, not the prettiest decision, but be able to grind out a decision nonetheless over um, side of wide. On the feet, he definitely don't want to stay there too long, could easily get knocked out, but I don't see him going out there trying to improve, you know, show off his striking or anything, especially not in this fight. No one seems to get leaned over, knocked out, anything like that. So probably mixing just a, enough striking, go for some takedowns and grind out, you know, just grind out a decision. like. Gonzalez had that wrestling pedigree in his background, like was a very standout wrestler, was a Olympic team member or a U.S. team member for the Greco team and in, in, what, 2016? So the man is like definitely decorating that skill set and to bring along, you know, the added skills that he learned training. So, yeah, a lot of talking is to say that the man's going to lay and pray his way to a decision. So in this one, I got Chris Gonzalez via decision. Now to our next fight we have in the Bantamweight division, Darian Caldwell versus Enrique Barzola. So I don't know why Barzola is the favorite for whatever reason. I guess they were very disappointed with um, Darian Caldwell's last performance. But all that being said, Enrique Barzola, uh, Enrique Barzola is not much of a striker, not much of this, not much of that. His primary game as far as like MMA right now is definitely his wrestling. And outside of that, Enrique Barzola, like I said, he's not a knockout guy. He's not a such a, I don't know, like, I'm not really saying that's all that special from Enrique Barzola, to be honest. Like I said, good pace, okay striking, and some solid wrestling for MMA, but Darren Caldwell is just on a different level as far as wrestling, and I feel like the best thing Enrique Barzola can help to do is outpace, and that's about it. And he don't have really no submission game. I can see if he had, like, a good guillotine, or at least a decent guillotine he could threaten Caldwell with to, you know, make Caldwell kind of get shook up a little bit, and then start to work on him. But if he don't have no, since he don't have no um, notable guillotine, which Caldwell like is his kryptonite, you know, any any choke dealing with the neck, Caldwell does not like, and it will make him very uncomfortable. And if you get it any bit secured, a tap will come soon. Well, yeah, if it's a decent choke, like a decently in, that's not his best area of defense. Like you see him get tapped about at least what twice now. Probably like three, yeah, matter of fact, like three times now. But either way, I just feel like Darren Caldwell with his fight to win. He's longer, a much, much better wrestler. This Enrique Barzola literally getting, you know, what, anatomy of the fighter getting tossed around by high school kids who I'm gonna think are champions, state champions. And Darren Caldwell literally is a NCAA champion and one of the better wrestlers of all time in collegiate wrestling. So this man gonna throw around Enrique Barzola. I'll strike him. I just feel like Enrique Barzola might be to come on late, but a little too late. I probably feel like it's 29, 28, but I'm really going to lean to 30, 27. I feel like in a three round fight, Caldwell should be to beat and dominate Enrique Barzola in every single facet of this fight. Maybe even get a stoppage, but I'm going to lean to a decision. So in this fight, I got Darian Caldwell via decision. Now to our next fight, we have in the welterweight division, Saba Hamasi versus Jalil Willis. So I see this fight right here between Saba Hamasi versus Jalil Willis. I feel like Saba Hamasi, you know, he presents a good package. He presents a good style, or well, not a good style, but like, you know, a good overall skill. Uh, I don't know what to say. Like, I'm trying to give him a compliment, but I can't really give it to him. But all I'm going to say is he's sturdy enough. Like, he got some power. He got decent, decent enough. Well, yeah, like, I, I'm trying to give him something, but I can't really give it to the man. But either way, he'll be a good test is all I'm saying. Like, he's not going to be easy to walk over, all, I feel, for Jaleel Willis. Maybe for some other guys at a higher level, level he's like a walkover. But for Jaleel Willis, I feel like he'll just be, you know, a good testing block. And I feel like Jaleel Willis won't be able to walk over him, 
But I do feel like Jaleel Willis will be able to take advantage of his aggression, take advantage of sometimes his lack of fight IQ, you know, his ability, you know, his tendency to load up, his tendency to try to, you know, let me bang bro out there, land a cleaner shots, no beater to be hit, take advantage of the aggression, maybe score a takedown or two in there. And it's really just take advantage of the uh, over aggression from Sabah Hamasi, the loading up from Sabah Hamasi, and the telegraph from Sabah Hamasi, and to stay cleaner, stay composed, and beat him to a solid decision. So in this one, I got Jaleel Willis via decision. Now to our next fight, we have in the featherweight division, Henry Corrales versus Aiden Lee. And the high season right here between Corrales versus Aiden Lee is, I think um, Corrales is a solid dude, got a solid way around skill set, definitely prefers to strike in most cases. Got some solid wrestling defense. I don't really rate his offensive grappling and defense all that. I mean, offensive grappling and wrestling all that great. Definitely there, but it's definitely not, you know, his typical path to victory is there, but I feel like it's a weaker area of his. So I really have seen this fight. I feel like Aiden Lee's takedown defense should be the hold up against Corrales, and I don't think Corrales is going to go for that area too much. I see Corrales really just trying to cut him off, trying to catch him with those big bombs. But I see Aiden Lee using that height, using that reach and really sniping him, you know, pot shot him, using that length, using that height, using that reach. And yeah, drawing um, Corrales in, landing shots, stepping off, and not just flat out not being there to be hit for by him, by those big shots. Still see this as a pretty competitive fight, but ultimately I just feel like Aiden Lee's gonna land a cleaner shots and he's gonna be the one dictating this fight with his length and his reach. And I do feel like he's the cleaner striker I definitely feel like um, Corrales is the powerful striker, but I feel like Corrales is, I mean, I feel like Aiden Lee is the sharper striker, and that, that heightened that reach is definitely going to help him and aid him in being able to, like, say, snipe Corrales out there. So in this fight, I got Aiden Lee via decision. Now to our co-main event, we have in the lightweight division, Ben Henderson versus Islam Mamidov. And how's this fight right here between Henderson versus Mamidov is, I feel like Ben Henderson is like still a very solid fighter, but you know his career kind of changed around right now. I mean, I'm not saying like his legacy is tarnished or anything like that. It's definitely not what I'm trying to go with this. All I'm trying to say is, even like at his best, a lot of his fights were very close, like could go either way, and that kind of trend has continued to, into his later career. But it has continued. But now he's on the receiving end of the losses. At first, it'd be like a close fight, but he would get his hand raised at the end of it. But now those close fights are going against him. Like fights that probably he should have won, he's losing. Fights that maybe some people feel like he should have lost, he won in the past. Now fights that he probably feel like he should have won are going the other way. Not still to see this as a close fight, relatively. But I do feel like um, Mamadov will win. It'd be close, but I feel like Mamadov will win on scorecards and win the actual point battle and whatnot. And also, if it is close, and say he does, I feel like a close fight that should lean to his way, the judge is going to probably just lean against him in a close fight. It's just like where things are at right now. So I feel like Mamadou is going to be the one, maybe not landing the most volume, but be the one landing the heavier shots. And I think he'll be the one winning the wrestling battle. So it'll be a case of pressure power and maybe a little slight edge in the wrestling department as far as takedown scored or at least control time whether it be against the cage or on the, like you know with takedowns and on the ground and like I said like like the cage control well yeah like forward pressure and power and some takedowns probably by like a, maybe winning by like one or two takedown margin like a plus one or plus two or maybe even be tied but the fact that again Mamadoff would be one pressuring and doing the heavy shots so that's going to be favored over maybe Ben is landing the prettier strikes maybe Ben is landing the one with more diversity and have his moments here and there but again here and there whereas Mamadoff is constantly walking down and landing big shots or even if they're not landing throwing big shots and connecting on like an arm or shoulder or something like that still being factored by the judges so in this one I feel like the decision will go to Mamadoff so in this fight I have Islam Mamadoff via decision now to our next fight we have in our main event in the heavyweight division, Ryan Bader versus Valentin Modovsky. And I see this fight right here between um, Bader versus Modovsky is, I feel like um, Bader is kind of on the downtrend at this moment. And Modovsky not necessarily looking all too impressive himself, 
but I feel like this is his fight to win, in all honesty. I feel like Bader's coming off like a couple brutal losses. He lost to um, Vadim Nemkov, stopped, got stopped in the first round by um, Corey Anderson, and then he just kind of rebounded recently with a win over a 90-year-old Machida. So that's not the best look. And it was a decision victory. He was getting picked apart early, and then Machida just started to fade. So younger Machida was still wash, prime, you know, prime Bader. I feel. But yeah, it is what it is. But um, I feel like the biggest factor in this one is wrestling, and I feel like Maldowski has enough, you know, solid enough uh, wrestling game of his own that he can stuff the takedowns of Bader and, you know, keep Bader on the feet too much. And I feel like Bader can really wear that heavyweight power too much. I feel like he got away with that because he, he really didn't have to um, wrestle too much. I mean, he didn't really have to stand too much with some of these big, these actual heavyweights, and he could just wrestle them, and a lot of them have pretty much zero grappling. Like, Matt Mitch, your own, like, literally, like, negative wrestling, negative jiu-jitsu. Chicago always had issues with wrestling. You know, these heavyweights that don't have the best track record at with wrestling. So he got over them, and he didn't really strike with them too much. But with Madovsky, even though Madovsky has not necessarily look, been looking the best in these fights, he is the truer heavyweight, and he will keep Bader on the feet more. And I feel like Bader ultimately won't be able to wear that heavyweight power too much. And he won't be able to... Uh, you know, be able to go to his wrestling is a safe haven like he has in these other heavyweight fights, especially coming off, you know, not the best recent fights. Yes, he's coming off a win, but it's been stopped, like, in the two other fights prior to his last fight. So I just feel like it's going to be a case of Bader's gonna have, not going to have the success he wants with his wrestling. Not going to be able to lean on it. Be striking too much. And ultimately, those are going to wear on him. And I see Madovsky putting him out in the second round. So, like, spending too much time on his feet, eating too many shots. And that heavyweight power is going to be too much for him. So, in this fight, I got Valentin Madovsky via second round TKO. And, that concludes and so that concludes my fight predictions for some of the key fights for Bellator 273, Bader versus Madovsky. And as always, thanks for watching.